So you want to attract butterflies, bees, birds to your outdoor space, but maybe you don't have a lot of room. You can absolutely make your own pollinator pot out of Florida wildflowers and other native plants. And we're here today to talk about just which ones can work best in your outdoor space. My name is Jennifer Tyson with the Florida Wildflower Foundation. Today, we're making pollinator pots. So, how do you find out which plants are the best to put in your pollinator pot? We have the answers for you, but I'll tell you personally, I found out through experimenting. And really just because sometimes it's hard to find a spot in your yard where you really want that plant that you bought. I know we're all guilty of it. So some of these plants behind me have been in their own pots for a very long time. Others are combinations that I purposely put together. So let me just start over here and we'll talk about some shade plants that you can choose from that also attract pollinators and do flower, it's possible. There are wildflowers for the shade. So right over here up top in the blue pot, we have lizard's tail. It loves a pot with no drainage because it likes swampy kind of wet areas. And it thrives in shade with a little bit of morning sun too. That's where I have it. We have peperomia. This is a great plant for shaded areas. It's not so much of a pollinator plant, it's just nice and decorative when it comes to that. We have coffee, yes, coffee. So this is a dwarf version, and this gets beautiful um, white flowers on it in the spring and summer, and attracts bees and other pollinators. It's also a host plant to the coffee moth which is really striking. It's got these orangey, reddish, maroon, and, uh, and yellow markings on it. We have salvia, pink salvia, tropical sage. The bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds love this plant. Those were put into this water feature that never really worked. So I finally just put some pollinator pots right inside. Now I can switch them out because I've not actually planted them with soil and gotten really in there. I can just pick them out as I want to. Now that does mean you have to water a little bit more frequently, but it's possible. In the next segment, we're going to talk about pollinator pots that you can create with different combinations. There are so many different complementary plants that have the same needs when it comes to water, sunlight, so we're going to get into that next. One basic design element to make your pollinator pot look Instagram worthy is to plant a thriller, filler, and spiller in the same container. The thriller is tall and might include grasses, which provide habitat and food for pollinators. A filler plant is broad and adds bulk to the main area of your design, while a spiller drapes over the pot, creating a pleasing design. Pine straw or oak leaves make a great mulch to help retain moisture. Spanish moss may be used on top of either option for a more decorative look, as done here for photography purposes. So we're about to make a part shade, part sun pollinator pot. This is a pot that's going to require a little bit of moisture, um, so you want to keep it watered regularly, but it will thrive in part shade, shade being the key word. I know a lot of people think you can't plant wildflowers even in the ground in the shade, but you absolutely can. So there are a few elements that we're going to add to this pollinator pot. We really shouldn't talk about pollinator pots too much without talking even more about the host plants. So we know that Butterflies need to lay their eggs on certain plants. They have evolved to lay their eggs on certain plants. And this is one of them. This is Corky Stem Passion Vine. This Passion Vine is definitely daintier and less aggressive than the typical Maypop that you may be thinking of, the purple Maypop Passion Vine. This one has dainty little green flowers, and this one that I'm holding doesn't have any green flowers on it right now, but the flowers are very small and a light green color. They're not very noticeable. The reason you have this is because it's ornamental on its own as a shade plant, but it also can grow well in some partial sun or even full sun. The reason you want this is because it is the host to Gulf fritillary uh, butterflies, as well as our state butterfly, our official state butterfly, the zebra longwing. Now, if you plant this in the shade, you're going to get more zebra longwings. If you plant it in a sunnier location, you'll get more gulf fritillaries, those orange butterflies. Now, this can twine all the way up a trellis. So if you put some bamboo um, in here, or maybe a more decorative um, white trellis, or some other trellis that you'd like, any kind, will work well with 
this corky stem passion vine. Something to note about host plants, and that is they will come back. If you plant this and you're dismayed for some reason that it's being eaten up, don't be. Know that it's serving its purpose. It is providing the, the food that our imperiled butterflies, our threatened butterflies, desperately need. And it will grow back. That's how they've evolved to work so well together. It's a symbiotic relationship. So don't worry if yours is eaten down, it'll come right back. There are a couple of other flowers that you may have seen um, before we started talking about them, and they're down here. One of them is Stokes Aster. Now this surprised me. I was expecting the purple or pale lavender flowers when this bloomed. No, I got the white version, and that was exciting for me. It's not that common, so I wanted to go ahead and include it here. Sometimes you just never know what you're gonna get with wildflowers, and that's part of the fun of it. Now, asters are phenomenal for pollinators. They bring in butterflies, bees, and even wasps pretty regularly. And this one in particular is wonderful for a partial shade, partial sun pollinator pot. So it would do very well in this combination. This is Coreopsis leavenworthii. This is our official Florida state wildflower. There are many different types of Coreopsis or tick seed as it's known. And this is one that grows very well in a, again, partial shade, partial sun, and um, some somewhat moist soil. It, it's somewhat drought tolerant as well, but you could easily put this in your pollinator pot and watch it thrive. Now there are a lot of little seed, uh, or I should say seed pods, but also um, some blooms that are just getting ready to come about. So you only see a couple of flowers on it right now, but very shortly it's going to be a showstopper, especially in the spring, but also through the summer and even the fall. Just deadhead this when you're done uh, watching it bloom, and then you can have even more blooms later. So here we have our shade slash partial sun, somewhat moisture loving um, pollinator pot that you can add to your own garden just find the combination that works well for you, try some things out and see what happens. It's all a matter of changing your viewpoint on what is beautiful to you. If what is beautiful to you is becoming a part of the pollinator pathways that we desperately need throughout Florida for our imperiled pollinators, and also ourselves, that's beautiful. That's beautiful to me and that's beautiful to a lot of you. Each season brings a different type of bloom a different type of wildflower, and those are important for all the different pollinators that depend on these blooms in very specific seasons. There are some spring bees, native Florida bees, that you're only going to see during that particular season. Others are more active in the fall and need fall blooming asters. You pick the various types that work together and start to see the differences in your own landscape when it comes to welcoming the wildlife that absolutely need our small pollinator pots, our large pollinator pots, any kind of native plants and wildflowers that you can add to your garden are going to make a huge difference. So one other thing to keep in mind with all of these pollinator pots is that they're not always going to be in bloom. This one just started its bloom period, as did some of the others that you can see right here. However, with wildflowers, they have various seasons. So if you want to enjoy the seasons of Florida, really tune into native plants. They will make you aware of spring, summer, fall. I know you may be laughing and thinking there's no such thing, but there absolutely is. So what about hanging plants? You may be wondering. They're great for pollinator pots as well. This particular plant that I will be putting in this hanging pot is called frog fruit turkey tangle frog fruit, matchstick plant, whatever you'd like to call it. It's a perfect plant for bringing in pollinators, but also a larval host for various butterflies, including the common buckeye, the white peacock. It's just coming into bloom. That normally happens between May and October. So it has a long bloom period and it will fill this pot and just drape over it in a very lush, beautiful way and bring in the pollinators. Our pollinator pot handout provides even more detail on how and what to plant to support all types of pollinators, from native bees to hummingbirds, butterflies, skippers, and many more. Check it out on our website.
So we hope you're inspired to create your own pollinator pots to be a part of the pollinator pathways that are going all throughout Florida in people's landscapes, nature parks, schools, and so on. This is all to help the imperiled butterflies, bees, and birds throughout our state. You can make a huge difference even with a small pollinator pot. Thanks and subscribe. Find out more of what we have to offer on our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.